Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist and on this channel I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants both indoors and outside. And in today's video we're looking at the 17 essential plant nutrients, counting our way down to Christmas using something we like to call plantness here on the channel. First I want to show you literally the cutest thing ever because I can see it in my camera but I'm confident you guys cannot so just let me, I just want to show you this. My cat is sleeping on my dog's bum. <laughs> it's literally the funniest thing ever because that dog has the stinkiest gas ever. Oh my god. Is it bad that I just want to stop filming and I just want to join in in that little cuddle mug there? Oh my god. Kane's like, yes, you can. Please do. Anyways, today we're talking about the nutrient molybdenum molybdenum and I'm gonna I'm gonna screw this up so many times in this video so feel free to laugh because it's gonna be bad so molybdenum is a micronutrient and it is essential in the movement of nitrogen not just the movement of nitrogen but the actual uh, structure will change of nitrogen so plants in desperate situations because nitrogen is so important as a primary primary macronutrient to the plant in general we end up a lot of the times with plants uptaking nitrogen that's not in the best form for uptake unfortunately so what ends up happening is we end up with elements such as molybdenum that help to transfer something such as a nitrate into a nitrite and then essentially into ammonium, which are more bioavailable and less toxic forms of nitrogen for plants. Now this is particularly important for those plants out there that nitrogen fix. So this is anything in the legume family. So a molybdenum deficiency can look like a nitrogen deficiency. They're also um, very commonly cause uh, something called a whiptail deficiency, which can be seen uh, commonly on like cauliflower or broccoli, cabbage, that sort of thing. So a molybdenum deficiency can cause deformities in the leaves. And this is just because the plant's nitrogen form that is being uptaken is not the ideal form without molybdenum present. So this is really similar to that of nickel. Nickel is another micronutrient that helps aid in the transfer or the change metaphysically of nitrogen and the form of nitrogen uptaken within the plant. So keep in mind that molybdenum, nickel, all these nitrogen transforming elements, it's not happening in the soil. The soil, there's microbes that will do this process. There's normal um, chelation or uh, reduction or oxidation that will take place in the soil outside of the plant but the processes of molybdenum and nickel for example are happening within the physiology of the plant so it's happening inside once that less than ideal nitrogen is uptaken that's when this is starting to take place so molybdenum is a mobile nutrient meaning if there is a deficiency it is going to show up in those older leaves so that whip tail type looking leaf or a nitrogen deficiency looking leaf it's all going to show up in our older leaves not our newer leaves and the main way that this that the molybdenum is taken up is through something we like to call mass flow so that is the straw mechanism where everything in the soil solution is uptaken all at once. So I just want to read to you guys um, the sources of molybdenum because there's quite a few. I don't want to miss any. There's sodium molyb molybdidate. There's ammonium molybdidate. There's a molybdenum trioxide molybdenite and molybdenum fritz. So the method in which molybdenum can be applied to the plant is that if you the soil and also foliarly. So it is a small enough molecule that can be uptaken through those stomata. So the Princeton University actually used a synchrotron, which is a very fancy microscope that lets us see uh, Re structures on a very molecular level. It's pretty wild stuff. We have one here at the University of Saskatchewan where I'm at, we're in the city that I'm in. It's a big building. 
that gives you tiny results at the end. It's very, very cool. If you guys ever have a synchrotron near you that you can tour, you know, sign up, do the tour. It's really, really cool stuff. But the Princeton University actually used a synchrotron to determine the role molybdenum played, particularly in forest scenarios, so in tree scenarios, and how molybdenum was re-added to the soil, where it went, how it was bound to the soil, did it get you know leached out easily, how the plant retrieved it, all that fun stuff. And one of the things they found out was that molybdenum actually hangs out with iron oxides. Now, in the absence of iron oxides, it also hangs out with organic material, in particular tannins within organic material. So that is the special stuff that causes water to go brown in freshwater scenarios. So uh, when it's in the presence of iron oxide, obviously, we haven't done iron yet, but it's coming, I promise. That can be uptaken by the roots into the plant. But the interesting part of, about it binding to the organic material is that in this study, it actually showed them that it bound to the organic material in the top layers of the soil, meaning it was binding to the organic material that not only was present for the roots, but also was present for the nitrogen fixing bacteria meaning it's in the wheelhouse of where it needs to be to help with the processes with the plant. So I guess the kind of the cool part about this whole study is that nature has been able to recognize the value of molybdenum within the plant, the process it plays in plant growth, and then help to ensure that when the nutrient is uptaken into the plant and is placed in the leaves, not so much the shoots or the roots, but the leaves of the plant, so that when the leaves die, they fall onto the surface of the soil, the decomposers decompose and do their thing, and then that molybdenum is re-added back into that organic material, and then ultimately that cycle is repeated over and over again. So very cool stuff. There you have it. Molybdenum is the next one we can check off our list for essential plant nutrients. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you knew molybdenum is an essential nutrient and if you can say it three times fast without your tongue being like tied and you know swallowing it or biting it or something crazy. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.